development in recent times. Because let's not forget that Mauritius is India's top FDI source. If you look at the investments that have been pumped into Mauritius, we're looking at $9.3 billion inflows in FI 14-15. So that's the kind of money that comes in uh, from the Mauritius route. And clearly, uh, India was looking at, in fact, curbing any sort of misuse of this route. Uh, in fact, for more perspective, we're now joined by leading tax expert Pranav Sata. Mr. Sata, this is Ashwin Mohan here from the ET Now newsroom in Mumbai. Big breaking news coming in from the government. Uh, India and Mauritius have, in fact, signed a revised double tax avoidance agreement. And we understand that as part of this agreement, India will have the right to tax capital gains. Your preliminary observations as part of this treaty, because this is clearly going to impact investments as well as, of course, the flows that come in from Mauritius. Well, uh, I mean, on the face of it, it's an extremely material, critical, extremely in important development. One has to wait and see what exactly is the change, when the protocol becomes effective, whether existing investments are grandfathered. Is it really that capital gains henceforth will not enjoy exemption under the Mauritius India Tax Treaty from Indian capital gains tax? All of these need to be seen. Uh, I would feel it's a development which is one of the most important tax developments in recent times, if indeed it is actually true. But one has to see the exact details of what the protocol or the amended treaty says. Mr. Siddha, that's right. In fact, we are waiting for a few more details to trickle in from the government. But now it is official. It is a statement that has come in from the finance ministry. And uh, they have, in fact, officially clarified that uh, the much-awaited amendments to the Indo-Mauritius tax treaty have, in fact, taken place. And, of course, uh, critical amongst most of them is the fact that India has the right to tax capital gains. We're also now joined on this breaking news story uh, by Mukesh Bhutani. Uh, from BR, BMR Legal, Mr. Bhutani, your preliminary take, Mr. Sayata, feels, of course, that it's a crucial and very, very uh, market-sensitive information uh, that has been, in fact, uh, uh, officially now communicated by the government. How do you look at this uh, policy news, and how do you think it will impact uh, M&A activity and also fund flows from a very uh, important jurisdiction as far as the capital markets are concerned, and that is, of course, Mauritius? Well, I think uh, the uh, extent treaty had uh, a provision that uh, that only Mauritius could uh, tax uh, capital gains. And uh, this amendment uh, seems to suggest that India will retain rights uh, to tax capital gains, which means both India and Mauritius uh, will have the right uh, to levy uh, tax on such gains. I haven't heard any change vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the exemption for capital gains is concerned. Uh, so one needs to examine uh, the details uh, in order to come to the conclusion whether this is going to uh, adversely impact uh, any of the segments, whether it is from an FDI standpoint or from an M&A standpoint. Having said that, uh, there is a background and history uh, behind uh, the negotiations of uh, treaty uh, between the two nations uh, because the official position of both the governments have been uh, that the treaty is under negotiation at least for the past six years or so. And to me it seems that uh, they have achieved closure. Uh, India's view has always been that the nil capital gains tax regime coupled with a right that only Mauritius had to tax capital gains was uh, resulting in a stateless income and hence the limitation of benefits clause should be amended uh, in, in a manner that treaty abuse is avoided. Uh, to me it seems that the response from both the sides is that, uh, you, know, you know, let India retain the right to tax capital gains and uh, that seems to be the answer. So it's, it would be premature to assess what the impact would be, but uh, clearly uh, it will have an impact uh, uh, insofar as investments that are outed through Mauritius. Thank you, Mr. Botani. In fact, for more perspective, we're also joined by Puneet Shah. He's joining us from London. He, of course, is a partner at Dhruva Advisors. Uh, Puneet, this is clearly a big, big move by the government. It was in the making for quite a while now. Uh, perhaps the biggest tax policy decision that has been taken by the Modi government after they, in fact, uh, took control. What is your take on this? Do you think it will perhaps restore the equity or, you know, perhaps put Mauritius and the other 
popular tax havens on a level playing field because it was in fact always uh, felt that Mauritius had an unfair advantage. In fact, Puneet, before I move on to you, we are also joined uh, by uh, Shakti Kanta Das. Mr. Das, uh, 